Hello world, my name is Joe Strout and I am here today to show you how to get started with Mini Micro. Okay, the first thing you're going to need to do, of course, is get a copy of Mini Micro. You can download it from either of two places. One is at itch.io. There's a Mini Micro page there and I'll put the links to these in the comments below the video. Um, at the top of the page there's the project itself or you can just scroll down and get to the download links. That's at itch.io. If you go to miniscript.org slash minimicro, it's pretty much the same thing. The project runs automatically. There it is. But if you scroll down, here are download links, Mac, Windows, and Linux. It doesn't matter which one you download it from. It's exactly the same files. I'll just grab this one and tell it to save. Now, it's going to be downloading as a zip file, so as soon as it's done downloading, which it is already, we have to open that zip file up. Double click it. Now in Windows, when you double click a zip file, it doesn't extract it. It just shows you the contents of the zip file. It's very important that you click extract all to extract those to real files. And it'll say where do you want to put it. This is fine. And here it is. Let's open this folder up. And here is Mini Micro. We can just double click that. And it's going to tell us, uh oh, it doesn't know the developer of this thing it might be dangerous. It's not dangerous. Click more info and tell it to run anyway. Under Mac, you'll see a similar thing. You have to right click it and select uh, open and it'll give you a warning about an unknown developer and then you tell it to open anyway. Once you've gotten past all that and it finally launches, it's going to look like this. On Mac, Windows, or Linux, it looks exactly the same. You get a welcome message here with the version info, uh, a random tip. Yours might look different. It's different every time you launch. And then this helpful prompt, enter help for help. But you don't need to do that today because I'm here to show you how to get started. And this is a blinking cursor. Uh, some of you may have never seen a blinking cursor before, but this is an invitation for you to type something. So you could, for example, type help, and it gives you a little bit of help. Uh, what we're at here is a Miniscript language prompt. Miniscript is a very simple language to learn. Uh, you can do simple math with it. Um, you can print things with it. You can do all sorts of things. Our goal for today is to explore some of the demos that come with Minimicro so that you can get a better idea of what sort of thing it can do. So to do that, we're going to, I'm going to teach you a couple of new commands. Um, first, clear, very important command, clears the screen, resets everything back to pretty much the default state. And now um, there's a couple of commands you need to know for getting around the file system. One is pwd print working directory shows that we are on a disk called user, but all of the interesting stuff is on a disk called sys, so we're going to use the cd change directory command to switch to sys. Now, those of you who have used a command prompt before in, in Unix or Linux or Windows, you may be surprised by these quotation marks, but that's because we're not at a file system prompt here. This isn't some kind of file system shell. This is actually Miniscript, the very same language that you use for writing your programs. And strings in Miniscript have to be quoted, so that means when we use a command like cd, we have to put quotes around the argument. So here we are in the sysdisk. I can use the dir command to list the directory contents. Uh, directory, for people not familiar with the term, is just kind of a fancy word for folder. So here's everything in the sys folder. And all the really interesting stuff is in a subfolder called demo. So we're going to do cd demo, do a dir again, and now here's all sorts of good stuff. And I'm just going to spend most of the rest of this video showing you how to explore these demos, because that's really the best way to get started with Mini Micro. Whenever you do a long directory listing, it'll show you at the bottom so many more. You can just hit return and it'll list the rest, or you could hit Q and it would exit out at that point. Uh, so where to begin? Let's start with something really simple, kind of boring, but nice and simple. Let's load 
countdown. I did that with the load command and then the name of the file, again in quotes, and it shows me six lines loaded. This is a really short program. Uh, in fact, if you want to see what is in the program, we can use the edit command. And here's the whole program. And this, again, miniscript code, the exact same kind, uh, same language that we're using on the command line. There's a for loop. It loops over the range from 10 down to 1. It prints i, which is the number plus some dots, it waits a bit, and four ends the loop, and then it prints blast off. So I wonder if you can guess what this is going to look like when we run it. Let's see if you were right. I type run to run, and here it goes. It's executing that loop. So this is a really boring program. I promise I won't show you anything this boring again. But I wanted to show how simple a program can be. Let's use our clear command. Wipe the screen, dir again to list directory comments, and let's do something a little more interesting. Um, a lot of these demos have sound. I'm not recording sound from the computer right now. I'm only recording it from my microphone. So I don't want to do anything that's really heavy on, on sound, like a drum machine. Um, but uh, perhaps, uh, perhaps a platformer demo would be fun. So we're going to say load platformer, run. And here we are. There's cute little jumpy and bouncy and footstep noises, but you can get the idea. This is a simple platformer game written in Mini Micro. When I'm done with this, most demos you can exit just by pressing the escape key. That worked here. If escape doesn't work, you can always press control C and that'll break out of any program. Uh, now, it got us out, but what's this? The text, the graphics are still shown. Um, in fact, if I do something like dir, it's going to list right on top of those graphics, which is kind of fun sometimes and good for debugging, but it's a pain here. So how do we clear the screen? You got it. Clear command. That was fun. Let's try something else. How about uh, uh, mochi bounce? That's a fun one. I do load space quotes mochi bounce and then run and here's another game use the space bar to jump on this one and the arrow keys to move left and right see how far you can get before you miss one and down you go that one also has some sounds that you can't hear I apologize for that I'll try by the next video to work out how to record from the mic and the computer at the same time all right let's clear the screen do a dir um, some of these are not graphical, some of them are text-based games. So for example, AC Ducey is a classic card game. This is a text-based implementation of it. When I run this, it prints the rules, it deals a couple of cards, and then asks you to place your bet. We're betting that the next card is going to be between these two cards, between the eight and the king. That's not very likely out of a full deck of cards, so I'm going to make a small bet. And it drew a 7, which is too low. I lost my bet. Let's try again. Between a 9 and a 2, I'm feeling lucky. I'm going to bet $80. And I lost it. I have only $4 left. Oh, boy. Well, you know what? I'm going to go for broke. And I'm broke. That's AC Ducey. It's a text-based game. And again, when you're curious about how any of these works, just type edit. And here you are in the code editor. And you can um, scroll through. Have a look, figure out how it works. You won't understand most of this at first. That's okay. Uh, there are tutorials. I'll, maybe I'll do another video on, on the language itself so that when you're ready to start coding, you can jump right in. Or go to the forums or the Discord, and you can find lots of help. Um, there's also documentation on all this. For today, I would suggest if it's your first day with Mini Micro, don't worry about understanding it, but just sort of get the big picture. We'll do just a couple more before we wrap this up. Here's a fun one. At least if you're a fan of the movie like I am, load the matrix and just run it. So this is using the text display. Mini Micro has an eight layer display and there's various kinds, uh, various modes you can put each display in. There's text, pixel graphics, sprite graphics, tiles, 
This is obviously using the text display. And if you look carefully, you can see some of the different characters that are available in the standard text display font. There's accented letters, there's little pictures of dice, even like some little people that appear now and then. This isn't the most efficient way of finding out what all of those special characters are, but it is definitely the most fun. I press escape to stop, and then I do a clear, and we are back to normal. Um, let's see, if you like strategy games, here's one that I'm kind of proud of. This is only 840 lines, that's really not that long, and it's a complete strategy game with an AI. You can generate maps until you find one that you like. This is pretty good, then click play. And this, you're blue here. You just select the territory that you want to attack from and then select the neighboring territory and it will attack it. Sometimes it wins, sometimes it loses. It's based on the roll of dice. And that's about all I can do in this group because you only get reinforcements in your largest group when you click done. And then the other players do their turns, same rules. If you want to speed this up, by the way, this particular game has a feature where you just press return and the AI will do the rest of its turns at super speed. So you just hit return for each player and very quickly get back to your own turn. You don't want to watch me play, but this is a hard game to stop playing because I must conquer the world. All right, I'm going to hit control C to exit out of this, though. Oh, and look, our text now is blue. That's kind of fun. But if I do a clear, it's actually still blue. So I'm going to show you one more trick. Because clear clears the screen, but it doesn't change certain global settings, like the text color. But that's something that you can change yourself. So here's a little bit of Miniscript code that does that. Text.color equals color.orange. Gets us back to the standard. Or you could do text.color equals, uh, let's see, um, any hexadecimal color here. So I can do FFCC00. If you're familiar with HTML colors, that's how that works. Um, I think that's probably enough for today. Let's just wrap up with where you can find out more. One is obviously to use the help command. And this will sort of guide you through a, a series of help topics. It says, for more help, enter help topics and quotes. So you can do that. This is one way to find out more. But for more in-depth help, there's a couple of resources. If you go back to the website, get this into the recording area here. Um, let's see. There's a link here under download mini micro. It says be sure to grab the mini micro cheat sheet, which tells you everything you need to know. This is a four page PDF um, that gives you yeah, everything that there is to know about the mini micro API. In fact, only three pages are about mini micro specifically. It talks about basic commands, disks and files, the displays, how to do sprites and tiles and all that sound effects. And then the fourth page is about the Miniscript language. Um, there's other places that you can use the Miniscript language. Um, Minimicro is just one. So everything on the fourth page applies to anywhere that you see the Miniscript language. The first three pages are about Minimicro. So this is a great resource. Um, if you've got a printer, print it out, tape it up next to your monitor, or just keep the PDF handy. Load the PDF on your tablet while you're working on your desktop, whatever you like to do. Uh, that's one place. The other place is, uh, if we go back to miniscript.org, you'll find links at the bottom for our Discord server and the forums. And these are a really great resource. You can post your questions here or just hang out on the Discord and chat with me and other Miniscript and Minimicro users, and you'll get help right away. It's also a good place to show off if you do something cool. Um, you can post it here and everyone can admire and comment on it. So we've got a community, we've covered how to download Mini Micro and how to get started running the demos. I think that's enough for today. Hit me up on Discord. Um, if you like this video, please like it, post in the comments, and I will get back to you as soon as I can.